Hurrah, hurrah. Hello, oh. everybody. So, we have officially had the van for 12 months as of three days ago. Yes. There you go, 12 months in this van. We still do love the van, we love the layout and it in general. Um, but as everyone knows, we've had lots of issues with warranty. We did a update at three months, and now this is going to be probably the last warranty video. I hope. Hopefully. No this doubt, this is going to be the 12 month warranty update. So we're going to whinge a lot. If you're not into that, turn it off. If you're interested, watch, basically. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you know how the whole thing's gone and whether it's all been fixed or if we're still waiting on things. Yeah, um, also I'm going to add that we are not going to be talking about issues that were dealt with in the three month video. Anything yeah. that got rectified in that video, we're not talking about today. These are all new ones. Yeah, and so this video might be long, apologies in advance. Um, and there may be things I've forgotten because I only did this list about five minutes ago. Uh, so anyway, let's, let's get into it. So there were some items that didn't get sorted out when we took the van to the factory at three months. Yes. So the first one was the door not locking. That one, they did end up saying to us, uh, we approved $200 in fixes for you to take it somewhere to get fixed. We pretty much couldn't find anywhere no. that we could get into. So Dion ended up fixing it. Do you want to explain what you did? Yeah, so the latch, when the van isn't perfectly level or flat, or if you jack legs up too high, it actually twists the door frame, because they're a very flimsy door frame. So mm -hmm. I ended up having to get a die grinder and die grind the hole up higher and shave some off the actual latch point. So it would actually make it under the actual latch point to lock the door. Yeah, so that's fixed. You'll remember when we picked up the van, it was in an atrocious state. There were there was junk and rubbish all over the ground. There was silicon and silicon and... everywhere. The couch actually had like like what looked like stains on it. It was grease, grease stains on it. Yeah. So we finally, after a long time, I can't remember how long it took to sort it out. Marvel agreed oh. to pay for the couch to be professionally cleaned. So you remember that the 240 volt zapped Dion and they had to rewire some of the, the safety switch and, and yeah. whatnot. They originally wanted to put an earth stake in. Marvel did come to the party with us on that. We told them about it and they're like, that's not acceptable. And yes. they did work with us to get that resolved. So yes, that's so. fine. Uh, we haven't had any further problems with being zapped with 240. So whatever they've done has fixed yeah, the van. I think the safety switch or the RCD that they had might have been faulty. It was something. faulty. It was so basically, uh, long story short, there were two lots of handwriting on the new safety certificate they gave us for the wiring. So we were basically wondering if that was okay. So we contacted um, Energy Safe Victoria just to double check it was okay. We sent them a picture of the certificate. They confirmed that they had spoken to the electrician and they were happy that it was fine. However, they were not happy with the fact that they were going to put an earth stake on a caravan as that is illegal. And they then went and spoke to that electrician and just re-educated him on the fact that that is not something that you can do on a caravan. Okay, so that's probably all of the stuff for, oh no, hang on, no one more, the mattress. Yes. So quick recap, the mattress, we ordered a longer mattress because Dion's quite tall. They gave us a shorter mattress. Um, we complained about that because obviously it's not what we ordered. They sent us up a new mattress, which was of inferior quality. So the one that originally came with the van had like a five year warranty. It was really nice. The one they sent up after had a two year warranty and it was quite crap quality. Yeah, you try and kneel to go to your nook and your knee hits the slats under the bed because there's no real springs in it. Yeah. They kept telling us it's not a warranty issue uh, we'll try and sort it for you under goodwill. It has now been resolved. Long story short, they ended up getting the better quality mattress in the longer size. They ended up sourcing one, even though they had told us that it didn't exist, they did get one. 
They then told us we would need to pick it up from either the Sunshine Coast or Melbourne, even though they knew we were in the Northern Territory. I told them no. They then said, well, we can ship it to you, but you need to pay for shipping. I told them no, because this was not something that we had caused. Like we had taken the van to Melbourne for them to fix and they hadn't done that. Yep. Uh, again, long story short, they ended up after months of back and forth. We, we went from Northern Territory to Queensland, up to Cape York, back down and back to Queen, uh, Northern Territory before they came yep. to the party on this. So they finally sent us the new mattress and we have it in the van now and it is great. Yes. So it was a lot of back and forth for something so simple, but the mattress is sorted. Okay. New things we have had go wrong with our van. <laughs> so yeah. let me just, I'm going to start crossing things out because we're probably not going to do these in order. So when we're in South Australia, our PM 300 died. Do you want to explain what the PM300 is? So the PM300 is the battery management system for the caravan. So your battery connects to the PM300, then it goes to your lights, your fridge, your fans, and your solar input and output. So when that died, nothing in the van worked. We had no lights, we had no, no solar, solar no we water had palm. No, nothing at all. So when it died, we had nothing and had to, well, we're only lucky that we put in the Enerdrive yeah. to have the solar blanket and the car plugged in to top up the battery to run the fridge. Yeah, so called projector and he's like, yeah, what's the problem? And as soon as I told him the error, he just went, oh, yeah, I don't think that we can't fix that. And I was like, what do you mean you can't fix it? And he's like, we've had, it's a rare error. It's come up three times in five years that he knows of. And only one person has been able to fix it uh, by unplugging the LCD screen and giving it 15 minutes. So he got me to go in and have a look and none of the lights in our box are on. So it's dead. Dead. Which means we have no 12 volt power. I can't turn lights on. Can't cook anything. Can't do anything. I uh, can't even get the pump to turn on to use water. So projector were brilliant. I think we've spoken about this before. So they organized for the next day a new complete new unit to be sent to us um express mail basically airmail they also paid for an electrician to swap it over for us yep and then we just posted the old one back to them for them to diagnose because it was a error that they don't get a whole lot often so yeah bad luck for us basically what else has gone so one of the latches in our cupboard broke so the latch hooks onto something inside the cupboard to hold it's the cupboard shut. It's just a little plastic bracket. Yeah. And they're very weak. Yep. Yeah. So I contacted Marvel about that, asked where I could buy a new one. They just sent me a new one in the post. That was great. That was really good service. Happy with that. So our grey water sensor in the tank is crap. and yeah, it's never worked. It's never worked. And it used to kind of work a little bit. But it got to a point where it didn't matter how much water was in that grey water tank, it read 100%. We were at a caravan park and it's empty 100%, like it just constantly. We did contact Marvel about that. They asked us to take it out and clean it, which we had already done. So we took a picture of that, sent that to them, and we just haven't heard from them since. No. So, assuming they're not doing anything. We know that they're not really accurate, but no. being on 100% all the time is really annoying. So I've just given up on that. Okay. Uh, all right. Next thing that has died on us is our range hood extraction fan above the stove. We went to just use it one day and the fan didn't turn the on. The fan just didn't turn on. And our range hood, the fan itself does not work. Does not work anymore. So that's died. So we had a couple of months with that not working. We contacted Marvel. They contacted Ranger, who basically asked for a photo of it, and we sent that through. They said, oh, your van's pretty new. It'll just be a loose wire in the, the actual in the fan, fan itself. So they sent us a brand new fan, and that did not fix it. No. So when we were at Darwin um, getting the van fixed, we got the repairer to have a look at it and he said it was actually the circuit board that was broken. So we went back to Marvel and let them know 
and they got straight on to Ranger who sent us a new circuit board. Yes. And Dion installed that and it works. So that's that's fine, that's fixed. That's fixed. The shower door, the little T piece that holds the magnetic strip in broke somehow, not really sure yeah. how. Um, anyway, we just contacted NCE for that, which is the manufacturer of the doors. the doors. They were fantastic. They said, yep, that's not an issue. Your van's very new, shouldn't have broken. They sent me a packet with like... Two of each. No, I think it was three of each. Oh, was it? Like top and bottom. So we have so many spares for that now. If they break, they just posted it straight up, no questions asked. So that was really fantastic service. Yeah. What else have we had? The TV bracket. Oh yeah, that one's a good one. Yeah, so... We like to watch TV outside. Yeah, when it's not stinking hot. Yeah. And Dion put the TV out on the bracket one day and... Oh, did I do it? No, I you did. You did. I put it up. And so I put the, the TV arm onto the bracket outside and the whole TV and bracket, like the bracket that was fixed to the external part of the caravan just fell off the wall. Yeah. They had attached it with the tiniest screws or only what, like 10 mil of it, I swear, was like into the caravan. Yeah. Even that, a screw into a piece of aluminum on the outside of your van, like a one two mil thick bit of aluminum is not gonna hold and it was through the sticker as well so the sticker had started to yes. let go so they put silicon on it to try and make the silicon hold it but yeah when the silicon goes to the sticker the sticker's just going to peel off yeah the silicon's not really sealed to it that well if you can just peel it off yeah the silicon just the same just peeling off literally just fell with the weight of the tv cool so now we have to see if the tv's broken so anyway, um, that got approved through Marvel to get fixed. We got that fixed in Darwin. They put it back on. They used, what did they use instead to fix it? Pop rivets through. So it's actually got a flanged yes. edge on the back. Yeah. And they cut the sticker out around the bracket and glued it to the wall as well. So it's actually properly stuck to the wall. Yeah. So that should be fine now. We haven't yes. had any further issues with that. No. Um, the TV hit the ground and it wasn't working at first and then it started to. So we didn't end up asking for the TV to be replaced, but now we're starting to have issues with the sound. So yeah, it's not going to full volume. It's got a rattle to it. And when the rattle gets bad enough, the whole TV shuts, like yeah. it'll turn off. So. so I think that's going to be a new warranty claim for a, for a new TV. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how that'll go. But, uh, what else do we have? This is just a random one. Our window latch broke. Yeah. So the little um, ball bearings in one of the arms for the... The locking point of the For window. the window. Yeah, the ball bearings fell out. Uh, so that was easy. We just went to a caravan repair shop. We bought a new latch and Dion installed it. Yeah. So... So what happened, what happened there is just the backing screw that held the two pieces together, rattled loose. The bearing came out and got jammed in the side and yeah. Yeah. So simple, easy, easy fix. Oh, what else have we got? The stove. So our Swift stove has caused us some issues. The oh, yeah. <laughs> One of the burners just refuses to stay lit. So when you turn the stove on, as soon as you pull your hand off the little knob, it, it just goes out. Yeah, it goes out. It turns the gas off. Yeah. So we did contact Marvel about that. They said basically not something they can help us with. We need to contact Swift. We contacted Swift. They sent us a list of repairers and we have not been able to find anyone who can fix it they're either booked out for months or they're just like we don't do warranty work anymore and yeah the burner we still don't have fixed so that'll be interesting now we're over 12 months i don't know if anyone's going to fix when it did that burner happen that was, that was a long coming up through the middle of australia right yeah. that's at least six months ago yeah so i mean i've got a i put a warranty claim in then so we might be able to fall back on that but i have not been able to find anyone who will replace it yeah so Dion ended up pulling the whole stove out and he has fixed the lid. Sorry, I didn't mention that. So the lid, the screws kept rattling out. So the lid was, anyway, I'll put yeah, a video in. Dalton just, just tried to use the stove last night and the actual screws falling off the hinge. So to fix that, I have to pull all the screws out along the whole face, pull the whole unit out to try and find the screw to put back in there. The lid wouldn't stay um, latched at the back on the hinge point. Yeah. So yeah. So Dion pulled all of that out, 
and fixed it. Put some Loctite on it and crimped the ends of the screws so they won't actually rattle back out again. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the only reason it's still fine is because you've done that because that it, it's a bit funny again. Yeah, it's but very it's, loose. It's attached at least. The, the guy in Darn said it's a really easy repair, yeah, it's but we... It's changing out the actual you need a, switch. I'm you need a sure. gas fitter to do it, yeah. though. And that's the problem. Yes. The water tank. Hmm. What yep. water tank? So, we have two water tanks on our caravan. We were heading up to the Dampier Peninsula. We had two full water tanks because we were going to be off-grid for two weeks. Yes. And we're driving along and Dion was like, oh, we've sprung a leak. Like, there was a trail of water behind us while yeah, we were driving. Yeah, we'd broken a hose fitting off on the last van. I was like, oh, it's just a drain hole broken off. And we got out of the car and, no, the whole water tank had fallen off. Yeah. Kilometres back. Yep. Yeah, so the water tank had fallen out because the metal brackets had actually snapped. So it wasn't a case of, like, the bolts or anything were an issue. The actual... No, I was checking the bolts under the van. Yeah, the L-bend, you know, where it was like this, in here, had just yeah. snapped. You can see along the edge here where it's broken. Yep. It literally just attaches like that and it snaps straight through. This other end, I've actually had a closer look, you can actually see it's already starting to split that end. Mm. So, it would not have been long before that end snapped anyway. Yeah. So, snapped off the outlet, the drain, the breather. The next thing it stayed on was the actual pull point. <laughs> and that's obviously where it's hit the ground or something's hit it, which has actually just ripped it out. But the bash plate definitely took a lot of bashing. <laughs> yeah. It's just seen better days. That got fixed. We took it into broom. Yep. It came in at, I think, 620? 20 or 640. Yep. Um, and they did just reimburse us for that. So that was fine. So our grey water, we got a bypass put on so that you could have all of the grey water just not go into the tank if you needed to divert it. And they had done that wrong. And basically all of the... Washing machine. Washing machine water couldn't be diverted. So when I used the washing machine, it went out the bypass and it went into the grey water tank. Like both. You couldn't... Yeah. Which kind of defeated the purpose of being off-grid and being fully self-contained if I couldn't sort no, it out. Not even that. Just the fact that you have the bypass so it doesn't run junk through the tank unnecessarily. And yeah, you try and use the bypass and it goes into the water tank instead and... Like you, you got your little breather for the top of the grey water. It'll come out the top of the grey water breather before it comes out the bypass. Yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah. So anyway, so we, we put it in and we said, can you do that? We also asked if the marine hatches could be turned around. Marvel had denied this claim. They told us that the marine hatches could go either way. Any caravan you see on the road, the hatches open from the bottom so that, you know, if there's some protection. Ours had been installed so the hatches came down, so there was just basically a big open cavity into the van. If it was really hot and the sun was beating down on that side, we couldn't open the hatches because it was direct sun onto the fridge. And if it was raining, the van flooded because it was a big open cavity. So they said too bad, so sad. Like, it was fine the way it was. Uh, we disagreed, so we were just going to pay to have it sorted and ask for reimbursement later. Um, but yeah, the, the repairer called Marvel and he somehow convinced them that it actually was a fault, which it obviously is, and they paid for it. Yes. So that was that was great. So he also had a look in the carafan and said that there is no water damage. Oh, just an odd one. Like, we get the van serviced at the correct intervals and... Yeah, well, was it 1,000 Ks we did it down in Melbourne? Or was it Adelaide? In South Australia, because we had to cancel our booking in Melbourne because the van got in. Yes. So we got it done in South Australia. And then when we were back up in Queensland, we got the, the 10,000 10, done. And the poor guy, he had a couple of bookings. He was at our van all day because all of the bearings and all of the brake pads needed to be replaced at 10,000 Ks. Yeah. Wow. Not all of the bearings, not all the brake pads. All the inners, because of the torque on them, it actually the inner bearings were wearing more than the outer. They were getting hot spots on them. And the brakes were wearing uneven as well. So again, the inner brake pads were probably down to about a third left versus outs, which were still fairly full, but 
They wouldn't have lasted to the next, what, 10,000 K service? No, not even. No. And we were going to go through the middle of Australia again, so we didn't want to be no. having issues. So. so we had all the bearings and brake pads replaced after 10,000 K, which is yeah. which kind, I, kind of ridiculous, if you ask me. I feel like we probably could have put a warranty claim in for that, but we didn't. We've just paid for it and just yeah. moved on. Uh, and the, the couch. couch cushion. Yeah. Yeah, so when we first looked at the van when it arrived, there were notes, there was a clipboard in the van with notes, and it said that the wrong couch cushion had been put in, and we kind of just left it because we assumed that would get fixed. Yeah. We shouldn't make assumptions, people. So anyway, the couch I'm actually sitting on never sits properly. It it just comes out all the time, and it's really hard to... It's actually been made too long for the gap. Yeah. So, anyway, um, amongst all the other crap that's happening, we didn't put a warranty claim through straight away because we didn't think it was like a do or no. die type situation. It was annoying, but it wasn't, you know, crazy. Anyway, I was vacuuming the floor the other day and I actually noticed that it's actually started to push the cabinetry apart. So, I did put a warranty claim through for it. Marvel have, at this point, basically said we can't see that a couch cushion could ruin cabinetry and you basically should have told us yeah, you know, at, ages at ago. When we picked up the van, but but we didn't yeah. think it was an actual issue. Luckily they just took photos of the paperwork they had in the van. Yeah, because I went back to them and said to them there was paperwork there and they said, oh, we've got no record of that. And I was like, well, here's the record that you guys have. So I haven't heard from them. It's been weeks since I sent that through. Yeah. So we will... We will see. I've actually sent an email the other day asking for an update. So we'll see if anything comes through. But that's everything, I think. Yeah, lucky last fridge door. Oh, the fridge door. The fridge door has panels on the front of it that are kind of held in place with clips. Yeah. And a lot of people said to us that will break on the gib and it... Well, it didn't break on the gib. It didn't gib. break on the it gib. On, it broke on Smithies. Smithy's, where the van <laughs> Smithy's broke everything yeah um, so anyway our fridge is currently held together with sticky tape yes so I need to when we get to Perth I'll go to Dometic and I'll just get some new clips I I honestly cannot be bothered to go through the warranty process for a couple of plastic clips which will probably cost us 10 bucks yeah it's not going to be much so when we get to Perth we will um, we'll sort that out what I try and do is, regardless of whether we fix it ourselves or not, I put the warranty claim through so that they know it's an issue. Because I feel like when the warranty claim process is too hard and you just stop putting claims through... They assume not, the vans are good. It's not showing them that people are having the issues. So put the claims through anyway. Things like the fridge, for example, that's not Marvel's fault. No. Like, that's a, that's a Dometic fault. So I'm happy just to deal with Dometic myself. Um, but anything that's actually an issue with your caravan, let them know about it. I have met too many people that have had warranty claims denied because they've been told, well, no one else has complained, so it must be something that you've done. You yeah. know, when we got our van, our cupboards constantly opened in transit. Constantly. It was really annoying because that can cause a lot of damage. Um, we readjusted them all over time and got them yeah. fixed. That's the thing, we, we, we never got told that you can adjust the height of your drawers. No. There's literally two screws on the side of your drawer. You undo one, turn the other, lift the door up or down. You don't actually have to take the rails off and adjust it like everyone else thinks. We it's only know this just... from the guy that did the inspection yeah. of our van before we picked it up. So because he showed Dion that we've been able to fix it all, we didn't put a claim through for that. Um, we've since met people through on the Marvel road. and through other people who, you know, they've had a draw come out in transit on a two week old van. Yeah. They've put a claim through because the draw's been destroyed and they've had their claim denied because they've just said, well, you obviously didn't shut it properly because we've had no one else whinge about this issue. So let them know. They shouldn't be delivering vans where the doors are popping open. You know, they should be checking this stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, even just the fact that if you actually look at the draw runners, Majority of them only put two or three screws oh. in to hold your drawers. We've had to go through. We bought, I reckon we put 200 screws into this More. van. 
Was it more than 200? Yeah. I had three packets. Yeah. This one actually hasn't come loose yet. But on this side. Right. The amount of play in that screw is just ridiculous. And I expect two screws to hold a drawer in. One screw there, one screw there, and nothing the rest of the way. We have a fuller for it then. We should be able to go on a corrugated road and not worry about, you know, the drawers breaking. Yep. Um, yeah. So anyway. I think that's enough whinging for now. Thanks for bearing with our whinging. I know some people don't like the whinging, but, but we're just saying it how it is, you that's know? That's it. A lot of people need to know that they aren't alone in things well, going wrong with their well, vans. We don't I want to put these videos out as if we're whinging about it. We want to put it out to let people know that if you do have warranty claims or warranty problems, claim for them because you've paid for a van that has warranty. Use Make it. sure you use it while you can. And yeah, just we, we put them out to let you know that you're not the you're not alone in dealing with this sort of stuff. Yeah, it's really common. It's just not talked about enough. Look, when we sell this van, it's going to be perfect. Yeah. Whoever gets this van is going to get an amazing van because of all the stuff we put into it and the fact that we have got all the wrinkles out of it. Yeah. That's one thing we've learned on the road is sometimes it's actually better to buy second hand because all the warranty problems have already been fixed. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions, concerns, if you need someone to vent to because you're having issues with your manufacturer, send us a message. Jess is always there for you. Yeah, I have so many people message me about their vans and they just want someone to vent about the problems too and I'm more than happy to do that so feel free to do that we hope you're enjoying your van we hope that we've given you some comfort if you're going through all of the warranty crap you're not the only person and uh, yeah thanks for watching hopefully this is the last warranty video Thanks, guys see ya, see ya.